shot. Come on. Yeah! Needs it. Well, welcome back to Orange Bowl Lanes here in Lake Hill, Florida. We'll have a quick intro as we just did a couple of award presentations, a couple of nice, uh, uh, nice speeches from John Weber and, and, uh, and our Commissioner Tom, Car or right. Tom Clark. This is Tom Carter. I'm Craig Elliott here. Opening <laughs> match is underway, so let's just get right to Lanes, and we'll, uh, we'll get you up to speed on what's happening here. Sounds good. Yeah, that was our quickest open ever, Tom. That is absolutely the quickest open. <laughs> so they are ready to bowl. So opening well, match, John Janowicz, who just got his uh, official – uh, rookie of the Year notification, no surprise to all of us, the year he's had, taking on Brian Goble. Well, you know, he won the, the Masters there in Vegas. We got to watch that, and we've talked about that several times on the show. Uh, ball choices and what he did was totally amazing. And here he is on the show, bowling for his second major, uh, on a condition that when you look at the scores, looked like it was really easy, but the condition was way more challenging than what you think. Yeah, and... Uh, Easy is not a word we heard coming out of a lot of these bowlers' mouths this week. Uh, oh. There was a lot of words coming out of some of them, but easy wasn't one of them. I mean, there was some good scores. Oh, but the, the pair score. to pair, and this pair specifically, it was either really good or really bad. There was no in between on 11 and 12. Well, and you know, you, I hate to sound redundant, but it sounds like that every week I talk about the topography, the, the lanes from pair to pair. And you had a pair that you could shoot 260, 270 on, and you might come to the next pair. And 160, 170 was a grind. And the guys that could figure it out uh, are the guys that obviously are on the show. But the thing that uh, I, I noticed most about the guys, especially in match play, they figured out how to shape the ball. They figured out how to slow their feet down, slow their swing down, and give the ball time to shape. Now, there's obviously several ways to shape a ball. You can obviously change balls. It's got a different core, maybe a different surface. You can add more surface. Or you do it based on the way you can actually roll a ball and technique with ball speed. And these guys like Janowitz, he shortened his approach, really shortened it up, and really got around the ball so the ball would shape on the back end. Yeah, Janowitz, he was he was pretty much in the top five the entire event. He kind of backed into this. I mean, he was in the top five, but his last game was not very good. Um, that's how he ends up here in this opening match against Brian Goble. Yeah, he only shot a 187. Actually, his last two games were a little tricky. He shot 160 and 187. Yeah. And he almost backed himself right out of it, and Brad Angelo would have been in. I look at this shot from Goble. You see the banner from our champions down there. Troy Lint is a champion. He just doesn't have his banner there yet, but it'll be out here next year. It'll look a lot like... Uh, like Barnes, I think. It's not the Wichita colors, but it is black and gold. He's the Steeler fan. Is that what he picked? Yeah, I think so. Janowitz throwing a Crux Prime. Now that ball is, and we talk about this a lot, especially last week, in that van is, <laughs> it's like he's got 100 bowling balls and from all different decades. Well, that one, he, he went home, I think, Monday night because he lives close to here. And I uh, was thinking, you know, how he, he thinks. Um, he's about numbers and all sorts of different stuff. He's a mad scientist out there. And he, he said, you know what, I think this ball might work. And he drilled it Monday night. I think it was Monday night, Sunday or Monday night, one of those two nights. And here it is. Well, he, earlier, you know, I had made a comment when he was warming up with it. And I go, Crux Prime, really? He goes, I let the, uh, how do you word it? I let the technology and the science of the numbers dictate what I do. Yeah. So he's definitely into the the numbers, the science, the RGs, the differentials, intermediate diffs. But, you know, that's all good and fine and dandy. But then you got to have the ability that he has to throw it pretty pure in order to make it work. Yeah, that's why I don't worry about the numbers because I don't repeat <laughs> shots anyway, so it's irrelevant. <laughs> if you're not repeating shots, numbers really don't mean anything. Nope. Couple of stories, and we'll get to we'll get to both of them here. But uh, one of the stories you see that bowling pin there over Brian's right shoulder, that is actually one of the pins out of the uh, the rack from Johnny Petraglia's 300. He shot on national TV. Oh, really? Yeah, that's that's, that's pretty cool. That is very cool. He got ten of ten of the pins. Usually, what 19 pins or so in a rack? He has, I think, ten of them, 
And he's uh, he's handing out to a few different people. That one he gave to his good buddy John Laspina. And this is the Johnny Petraga, the BVL Tournament of Champions. BVL is something that Johnny and John Laspina have been a part of for a long, long time. This is actually Johnny's 50th year as part of BVL. Yeah, bowlers to veterans link. Yeah, and we'll we'll uh, we'll have Johnny here in a little bit. Um, at the end of our, our first match to talk to us a little bit. But then that poster now, Tom, that is uh, a real original. I think it's 1947. It was uh, either 47 or 49. B, one of the I, first BVL posters they ever made. That, that is, that's the real deal. Brian Goble with probably the most methodical approach of any of our top five. <laughs> uh, no question. I mean, it's sure. it's just really. I think it's a six, maybe a seven step approach, and he's just very methodical, short steps, but it all comes together right at the base. And off to an early lead, Goble strike three in a row. You see, Janowitz two spares, one strike. So Brian Goble with early advantage here in opening match. You know, Brian is obviously bowling well. He, guys from Kansas, he just uh, doesn't come out that much. But when he does come out, he's obviously a force to be reckoned with. You know, you every, don't get to be time. a PBA Hall of Famer and win 10 titles unless you know how to match up. He hasn't won on this tour since 2016. He won the, uh, the the Players' Championship back in 2016. But to his credit, he doesn't come out very often. No, I think, you know, I think he bowls. And, and this being a unique tournament, uh, our first tournament of champions on the PBA 50 tour, uh, we've seen a few faces that you normally don't see. Yeah, I think uh, Brian says he bowls about three events a year, but practice is, you know, eight months <laughs> to bowl those three events. That doesn't surprise me. You know, here we are on a fresh pattern. The guys are playing like 17 at the arrows, taking it to eight to the break point. And the big thing I said earlier, it's the shape. They're allowing that ball to shape down lane. We got Chase Kaufman and, uh, and Parker bowling out there. All right, we're here with Parker Bone, the third. Parker, you're looking for your 11th title this season or in your career on the PBA 50 Tour. What's kind of the game plan out there? Well, I got three games in front of me, and I know up and foremost I have to take it one shot at a time. So if I get out there and make 10 or 12 of the best shots I can each and every game, I have a pretty good chance to prevail. So we'll see how it goes. On this long pattern, we've seen a lot of the lefties really play further right than you're typically used to. Is that kind of be the same game plan for you this week? What kind of ball are you going to throw out for today? Yeah, I, I've been pretty much, I'll say, 15-ish, somewhere in there, with a, a red 2.0 pearl high hammer. And it seems like it's picking up pretty good. I do have to keep my speed slow enough, though, because if I amp it up and get a little hard, I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going to go through the pins very good. So if I keep it slow, let it let it read the lane the way it's supposed to, uh, it can do it can do the damage. All right, well, best of luck out there, Parker. Thank you very much. Well, Tom, I think we need to take Parker to uh, uh, ball name class. That's the Blackwood 0.2.0 hybrid. Black. <laughs> he do doesn't know. Red, he just throws the red him. hammer thing. <laughs> that red hammer thing that's dull that we've sanded with 500, mm -hmm. so it shapes. I think Brian's throwing the radical innovator. You know, what's something, you know, most people out here use switch grips or some kind of interchangeable th system, you know, vice or whatever. Brian doesn't even use thumb slicks. He, he's old school. People do that? Yeah. <laughs> There's not many people out here that don't use this slug. No. But he's old school. He doesn't use anything. He's all natural. Well, so correct me if I'm wrong, but one of the big benefits of using even just a Teflon sleeve is it keeps your thumb from swelling as much, right? Right, and, and it's the consistency. The inside of these balls, each one of them are made a little bit different, and they're just not the easiest thing, some of them, to get rid of off of your hand, you know, depending on how thick that uh, reactive resin is, and that responds to heat. So if your hand right. gets a little hot, right. it gets tacky, and I'm, it just amazes me that he doesn't use some kind of slug. Well, an 11-pin lead right now for Brian Goble as both players are starting to strike here. Well, Brian, spare five-bagger doesn't hurt. So we got a 279-290 game going. <laughs> John Janowitz makes it look so simple going to the line. He's got that little hesitation. 
really open-handed there at the, the follow-through, so he, he never hits up on it. He just kind of rolls it off his wrist. Well, the big thing we got through while we were down here is the hurricane that went through. <laughs> and luckily, yeah, it wasn't just, too bad. Just it a was, little afternoon shower. It was, yeah. <laughs> here it was. Uh, we've had bigger rainstorms in Columbus, Ohio than yeah, we no did. About that. We were very fortunate. A few were not quite as fortunate in the area, so our, our wishes go out to everybody who was affected by it. Well, J.J.'s got to know right now, look, I just got to keep striking because there's... Goble's not showing any signs of letting up. Well, Brian Goble, his last, let's say, five games were 248, 238, 276, 269, 256 in match play. So? That's it. We had a couple guys make some nice runs. Mike Haggett yesterday gets in at 15th and then just crushed him in, in match play and made a run, kind of faltered today. And then, how about Jeff Johnson? Today? Jeff Johnson, I, th that was amazing. He started out in 16th today. He ends up in 8th. But he goes 258, 269, 279. Then he falters a little bit. 215, bad game. 266, 201, 254, 240. I mean, he put the pedal to the metal. It was impressive he to He had a chance to make the show starting in 16th and had a chance to potentially get to that top five, come up a little bit short. The guy that we thought might make it and had won three Tournament of Champions on the regular tour, Jason Couch. He was in the top five for the longest time. When he went from fifth to eighth in that game seven, that really hurt uh, his chance. Because, you know, when you get the position around, you, you got to gain position. But also, he had, you know, he was trying to pass a couple yeah. other bodies. And yeah, and he just, shot 180 that game in yeah. game seven. Well, they're that making, was probably they're making my this fault. pattern look pretty easy. <laughs> Well, well <laughs> you, you work with, with, with Couch a lot this week, and, you know, he, he kind of had that 250-170 look, right? We're I, trying don't, to I, don't, get, I don't remember all the scores, but I bet he didn't have a lot of 2-0s. Well, just looking back through it, uh, no, unfortunately his bad games, and uh, he probably doesn't want to hear this, is 181s, 179s, right. 180s. <laughs> and other than that, he was throwing 240s and 250s, but unfortunately his bad games were bad. At least in comparison to what we're watching here, which is basically 290 to 279. That'd be a heck of a way to start at TOC. And it's been uh, well over 30 years since the last Tournament of Champions was contested here on this 50 tour. Folks, don't get the wrong idea. These guys are great, but this shot was not this easy. <laughs> well, you know, they had everybody had some practice. You know, they tried to break them down to make them a little bit softer so they have a little bit of room. Because, you know, Tom, you got to have some room for mistakes somewhere on the lane. That's true. That's true. Whether it's, you know, on the fronts, in the middles, on the back, you know, somewhere you got to have at least well, know, I think the, an inch the to aim at. The tricky part about this pattern, as the week started, everybody was, I'm going to call it, playing their A game, which is, you know, being pretty firm at the bottom of the swing, you know, with some good speed. And then they realized, you know, two, three games in, maybe four games in, that they had to slow it up and start shaping the ball because otherwise it just wasn't going to make it. Yeah, we saw Barnes do that to start the day-to-day. -day. All of a sudden he jumped in game one, you know, like, 17, just slow hooking it. It's like, where did that come from? Because he was one of, one of the guys who were piping it earlier. 10 for Goble. That uh, drops his max down to, what, 259, 269? Yeah, 269. 269. Janet was still with 279 possible. So Goble can force J.J. to double here in the 10th if he strikes out. But this match with J.J. wasn't like when he won the Masters. He's oh. using the same ball that he warmed up with at the Masters. <laughs> he, st he struck forever with that ball that he warmed up with, then picked a different ball. How about that poster on the wall there? BBL Tournament of Champions. There's a shot of Johnny up there with Parker and Chris Barnes and Walter Ray. That was a pure shot. I mean, the guys, if they're slower, they're taking it to eight. Most of the guys were right around 10, 11 at the break point. The big thing is you just couldn't get fir stupid firm on the shot. You wanted to, but you couldn't. I never had to worry about that, though. <laughs> I think I misspoke earlier, too. I said Troy Lint's banner. Troy Lint was just awarded the Rookie of the Year. 
But Tom Adcock is the fifth member of the step ladder. His banner is also not made yet. Troy Lent was he player, just of the year. player of the year. See, I'm just getting a little confused. He, he, what day Folks, is it, Tom? He's, he's been here too long. It's Wednesday. We've already <laughs> went through a hurricane. It's our last tournament yeah. of the season, which really stinks. This is our last tournament. We were we just gotta, hitting our stride. We uh, we just finally got you trained, Tom. I, thanks. I'm learning. We don't start up again until I think we might get to start up either the end of April or first of May next year. Okay. Kind of back to a traditional schedule potentially. Is yeah, kind of back to what we used to do. All right. 259, Brian Gold. Heck of a ball game to start things off here, but it might just not be enough. Yeah, uh, obviously John needs this first one, but he gets this first one. Uh, it's kind of like ball game. And this is the tournament champions, and obviously everybody won a title of some type. But to have three Hall of Famers on the show is pretty impressive. John Janowitz making it look simple. He never looks so excited, does he? I mean, he's just like. Yeah, he's. I swear. Show a lot of emotion. If if you've ever followed John Janowitz on Facebook, he's probably more concerned about what dessert he's going to have tonight afterwards. <laughs> Yeah, not a single guy on this tour likes him. One, because he wins every week, takes the money. And two, because he still eats <laughs> food that's not good for him. He's the skinniest guy out here. No, we're not jealous. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> As you have a whole bunch of <laughs> peanuts and candy sitting in front of you. <laughs> I might have snacked a little bit. Ooh. That ball just didn't read. But no, it doesn't enough. make yeah, a difference. No, it's still enough. Either. Yep. The first one locked it up. So he's a winner. He's going to take on PBA Hall of Famer Parker Bone the third. The only lefty we have on the show. Yeah. Come on. Oh, we're going to get a Hall of Famer living legend on the show. The one and only Johnny Petraglia. Yeah, BBL Tournament Champions, uh, named after this young right here, Johnny Petraglia. Johnny, welcome to the booth. What a first match there, 259-263. Yeah, it was tremendous. I, and, uh, well, it's sort of been the way that the leaders have been bowling all week, and they, uh, they really came on today. So what are you thinking about this next match with Parker? I think uh, Parker's got to get lined up early because Janowitz is already lined up, and uh, and it's going to be a high-scoring game. But, you know, Parker uh, has always figured out a way to get it done. It's just uh, so I, I expect a really, a really good game here. Uh, we got Chase Kaufman. Rico. He's going to go out and talk to Brian Goble. Uh. So I'm here with Brian Goble, Chase Kaufman here. Uh, Brian. He shot 259, you know, set flat 10 in the ninth, pocket 7 pin in the 10th. How, how do you feel about your performance here this week? Well, it, I'm way over. I overdid it. I didn't, <laughs> I'm ecstatic. I didn't expect to do this. So, um, you know, it was, it's cold. It has to be kind of cold in here to keep the approaches nice. My hands were just a little cold, and they were, the ball was slipping off there a little bit. And I, I lost two of them and left those two flat 10s. I wish I could have got a better feel, but a piece of tape would have made it stick. So, uh, no, he bowled great. So, you know, you can't do anything about that. I made him strike in the 10th, and, and he did. So, um, you know, I, I don't know what. This is This is a great way to end the season. I would have liked to have won, but I shot 259. What do you do? Absolutely. Fifth place finish, nothing wrong with that. Brian, I know it's been kind of a back and forth whether you're going to bowl a ton of events next year, what your events you're going to bowl. Do you have any more plans, or does this kind of solidify the fact that you really want to be out here? Well, I love bowling out here, but I have three grandkids, and since we've been bowling in the summer, it's just that's the best time to be with them. One's five, one's two and a half, and we got a new baby girl, and uh, I like to be home in the summer. We swim, we teach them to play baseball, and this is a hard time to be away. And since the senior tour bowls this time of the year, it's really difficult. I don't have to worry about making any decisions for, you know, eight months now. So at the moment, I'm just going to play it by ear and see what happens. We'll see what happens next year. So I might bowl a tournament or two, but it's just, it's just a, lot, a lot can happen between now and next May. So Absolutely. Well, Brian, congratulations on whatever decision you make, and congratulations on a great tournament out here, fifth place finish, nothing wrong with that at all. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks, Jason. Well, you know, Tommy said uh, the thumb – 
right? Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Yeah. Well, she hey, looked at that I, ball. I, 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 I brought that up. I, I mentioned something yeah. about it. Yeah, sure. Because he's the only guy out here that doesn't use a thumb slug. He just uses the ball. And I, I, I tend to think that that feel changes because of the way the balls are made. And like he said, you know, he, a piece of tape might have been too much. But uh, I think a thumb slug or an interchangeable where he could have switched could have taken care of that. But that's just my opinion. It's, uh, you know, if you feel especially, uh, if you feel like you're slipping off the thumb, you, the, the thing you want to do is put in a piece of tape right away, and you are worried about that first shot. And when, you're, when you're out there bowling a block, it's okay. It's one shot. Right. But when you've when you got to get it done right now, it's a little risky. Uh, not everybody's Norm Duke who can change it in the middle of the game without any problem. Yeah, and I don't know how he does that. I, yeah, and, uh, you know, it just, well, meanwhile, you got somebody like Parker who needs a strike to win on TV and switches balls. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, and throws the strike. So, well, uh, well, Parker, I, and I'm going to, I was going to talk about it later, but I'm going to talk about it now. Parker has the unique ability. He really sees m ball motion and pin reaction as a ball goes through the pocket. Mm -hmm. And he he can tell if he needs to change balls or what that ball's doing. He reads ball motion through the pins better than anybody I know. Yeah, he does it very well. He does. He, he really take a glance and know that the ball's going through the pins or well, not. You know, the average person you know, will throw a ball and, and see it, maybe not do what he wants. And they'll keep throwing it, thinking it's them. And Parker goes, this ball's done based on this, this, and this. And he switches. Like you said, yeah. he, he'll switch in the last shot of a game uh, for the win. He's done it. That's a, that's what's amazing. He's done it. Just, uh, so we'll have to see what happens here. It's He's throwing that red ball that he didn't know what it was. That, that red, that he's red he's got two of those. That's a 2.0 hybrid. Uh, yeah. and both of them drill the same way, one with just more surface than the other. Maybe it's a Hall of Fame thing because I heard somebody ask him a little earlier uh, when he shot that 299. And what ball was that? Blue one? Blue one. <laughs> so yeah. They got a blue one blue and a red one. Yeah. Um, Johnny, this is the Johnny Patrick, the BVL Tournament Champs. I know we've talked a lot through the week when you're in here. Uh, we got some new fans watching out home on Bowl TV. We talked about the poster and the bowling pin. And you got any more of those pins laying around? Because I, 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 I. Well, <laughs> my wife's got one. Yeah. So she's not giving hers up. She's not giving hers <laughs> no. up. Uh, All right. Uh, you know, Daryl Ducat, Lee Livingston, uh, you know, Ray Edwards. Uh, well, Ray Edwards would be the most accessible one, I guess, that you could get a hold of because uh, he's <laughs> the one that uh, laid out the, the ball and drilled it back then and, and ran to the locker room. to Ray from? From, from Brunswick. From Brunswick. Oh, okay. oh, oh yeah, that, okay. Yeah. The mad scientist. The mad scientist, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So first shot now, Parker Bowen the third here in the second match, taking on John Janowitz. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. It looked like it was laboring just a little bit in the practice shots. And uh, he'll end up bowling a good game, but you got to hope that it's enough because right? uh, I don't think Janowitz is going to Mitch much. Yeah. Well, he had, uh, Parker had talked about that his speed is a factor in this match because he's had to slow it up most of the week to make the yep. ball shape. Yep. And I mean, he's so good at throwing it firm, slowing it up is probably not – the That's easiest a, thing for him to do. It's the toughest thing for him to do when he has to throw it slower. He'll admit that. He'll tell you. So can I, if I have to throw it hard, I can throw it as hard as you want. That's not a problem. <laughs> slower is a little bit. Well, it's because you're doing something your body doesn't naturally want to do, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what makes it so difficult. That's why you watch some of the guys with such great touch and speed control on this tour, like a Tom Hess. He's been so great at that this year. Yeah. He's really slowing good. things down. Chris Barnes, yep. another one that's really good at that. And right now, John Janowitz is doing it. Yeah. Johnny and I don't have any problem slowing it down. Yeah, no, no problem at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> Used to be. When I, uh, when I watch uh, Barnes bowl now this week, I noticed that the hesitation between steps got slower. Yeah, you noticed that? And much longer hesitation. Yeah, between his second and third step yep. is almost a complete stop. Yep. And if you watch Janowitz, which is kind of funny, uh, and the first time we've seen John on the show, we talked about that. He has a hesitation. And we brought up Barnes. And another guy uh, that used to have a hesitation was out here on the senior tour. And he, I think he won one title uh, on the regular tour. And I just went brain dead. I started it. Out of Colorado Springs. 
Um, they called him Stop and Go. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, come on, Tom. Hispanic. Yeah. I don't know. Get up. Oh, you got me on this okay. one. Okay. Uh, yeah. um, folks, I'll be back to you. I'll, <laughs> I'll figure it out. Yeah. Henry Gonzalez. Henry Gonzalez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hit us both at the same time. Yeah. And he had that, yeah, he had that hesitation. Yep, stop. that was his nickname, Stop and Go. Stop and Go, yeah. Well, Jenny starts with the doubles. So, so, Johnny, you know, we always hear the players say, I'm not bowling the opponent, I'm bowling the lane. But in this situation, you got to know when you get out there, if your opponent just shoots 260, you, you're you still bowling your opponent, right? Yeah. I mean, I know that's, that's what a mental thing sure. may be. But, you so, know, you know you got to have a big score. Well, Johnny, oh, boy, is, oh, boy this is not good. I think he tried to slow that up to shape it, and it just shaped yeah. too much. And a lot of the of the games that uh, Parker bowled today, and he was in deeper too, a little bit farther yeah. to the right, kind of letting the ball float out and turn the corner. I mean, his A game is to try to keep it and kind of pipe it. But I don't. I think he's got to go back to what got him here. Yeah, you're getting hard right at him. Yep. More more like it. I uh, I agree because. Uh, the one thing that happens on TV, uh, if you don't want the lanes to develop, they can be better for the lefty when the ball in the match play. If you do want them to develop and you have a four to one ratio in practice shots, uh, it can be a, a deficit. So it, uh, right now it looks like. Uh, it, like what Janowitz has obviously lined shot. up. Yeah, yeah. And Parker's got to. He's got to get there. And right now, with the way Janet's bowling, Parker's already thinking, "I got to bowl 270." You know, so he is. As a guy that's been on a zillion TV shows, knowing that your guy just shot 260, and he looks like he's going to do it again, mm -hmm. does that come into as more pressure on you, or you just put that out of your mind and make the best shots you can make? You, well, yeah. yeah, you make the best shots you can possibly make, and uh, and you can't, you know, you're it's a it's an individual against the elements with no defense. Right? So all you got to do is have complete offense all the way. Could be a fun game if you can have somebody running down the lane at you when you're throwing the ball, right? Yeah, that would help. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he moved in yeah. deeper on that left lane. He crossed like 18 and never got it to the spot. And never got it to the spot. So that's that's a hiccup, which is a good thing for Parker. For Parker like, because he missed the pocket. There's, Getting a 10 pin wrap or something while he's still lined up. And it, well, wait a minute, he missed the pocket. Maybe something's changed a little. It wouldn't surprise me one bit. Ooh, that almost looked like a chop for a second. Yeah. Uh, if in the next shot or so that Janowitz doesn't change balls, he, he's been known to change yep. at, at a moment's notice also. Well, now these next two frames are big. If he can get through frame five down less than ten pins, that would be a big difference. Yeah, much yep, better. A much better shot. Yeah. And it looked like he kind of creeped to the right a little bit, kind of. And, and keep it on line a little bit more. Not right. try to go around as much. So you think it's the games are won. I'm just curious. Uh more games are won in the last two or three frames than the whole game. I mean, you think that's where, for the most part, the pressure well, happens and things change? The, well, the pressure happens at you know near the end of the game, and uh, well, some people love it and some people uh, react to pressure, and, and and other people go, I can't wait to get to the you know to the fifteenth round, you know, kind of thing <laughs> when, when it really counts. Well, your Hall of Famers are the guys that want the ball in their hand to win the uh, tournament, win the title, win the match. Yeah. That was farther left. Oh, oh my, my God. God! Yeah, that's. Well, I think he was staring at that line. I think I don't. I think it might have been intentional because he was really looking. You could kind of see him shaking his head. Yeah, and yeah he thought that one was uh, going to either make it back or. I don't wow. know if he lost he, it at the bottom a little bit. Possibly. Yeah, because that 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 line he just played well, had nothing to do with the shot he just oh, made on the right close. lane. Mm -hmm. Oh my! Now the big question was that on purpose. Well, I think yeah, yeah, well, based, on his, based on his first two shots on that lane, right? Just, yep. you know, okay, let me try something. And it's not there. Okay. I hate this spare. <laughs> it just seems so many ways to miss it, but uh -huh. Parker made it look like it was just easy. Jenna was right up and ready to go. It 
There's that hesitation. Yeah. Oh. Uh-oh. That was high and struck, but that lane is changing. Something yeah. has changed. Something's changed, yeah. And yeah, that's, he, he got away with one there, and he knows it. And no matter who wins, the way Janowitz is playing them, that's going to affect our next person that comes up, which is Chris Barnes. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be, if it gets to to, to Chris and, and Janowitz again, that's going to be just an unbelievable chess match. Those yeah. two guys will be going back and forth. I mean, there are a couple of tacticians out there. Well, Parker's still uh, you know, trying to give himself a chance. Janowitz hasn't locked it up or even anywhere close yet. 278 max score for Janowitz, 250 for Parker. I would like to, you know, God, we've had a zillion opportunities over the season, but I've never asked John. Whoa. Whoa. The game just changed. Eight. Sure did. 2810, the ball never read. It's like he got it in and he hit that puddle and it never read. I would like to ask him about the uniqueness of his setup, the whole process, you know, the ball hanging oh, down. Jan yeah, Janowitz, with, yeah, with Janowitz. I mean, how that all became about because it's uh, the ball hang down, the twist of the hips, and everybody's got their own little setups, but that, that one's kind of unique. Mm -hmm. yeah, he's got a little waggle there and get things set, right? Get the body in motion, go a little backup action. Yeah. Ooh. See, one of the things that looks like it's happening is when they were practicing, they were further right and throwing the ball a lot harder. And now, and you saw that in the first game, they were still doing it, but now it isn't quite working anymore. So, uh, Jano, it's looked like he had a move in and, and, and go around a little bit more and the ball hung on him and and so that's now you got a match, that's for sure. <laughs> Parker right. tripping out the sixth minute. But hey, his ball's crossing like twelve thirteen. Looks like he's yep. getting it out to about seven. But he got the ball on the left lane when he was over there the last frame. Changed drastically and I think he's asking for did he ask for a re-rack? I don't or know. I think uh, I think he's going to go harder and more direct on this shot. I, yeah, I think he wants to one get one thing out of the way and hit the pocket. If it well, carries, it carries. Well, if he can go back to his A game where he can throw it firm and keep it online. He's he's moved in a little bit because he walks right. Let's see. Yeah, see a lot harder. Oh, right. down on one knee, trips out that 10 yeah. pin. We got a ball game now. First strike on this left lane in this game for Parker Bow in the third. You know, I wonder if that little exchange with John Weber was kind of the opposite of Pete Weber, right? Pete likes to get himself pumped up. Parker just stays loose. I think he was just joking with John just to calm himself down. Yeah. Parker yeah. is the most unique personality when it comes to bowling because he can talk to people and laugh and just – kid around and all of that goes out the window when he steps on the approach he just he shuts everything off but he, he can compartmentalize very well oh my lord yes when the kids were little he had the other wives holding them and everything and he get done bowling his block and take the two kids and take them to lunch and they're sitting on the table throwing you know, things around <laughs> and all that and then go back to the lanes and bowl the next block and have somebody watching the kids again he was okay it was uh yeah. It, it never – he can separate everything very well. I mean, it's amazing. I mean, being a ball rep, I'll be back there behind him. He'll come back and start talking and laughing and t just talk about something goofy and go back up and just get focused and just lambaste him. Yeah. Ball change. I, yeah. ca I yeah. called it. Yeah. <laughs> I <could> and <laughs> he gave him two shots. Yeah, he changed yeah. balls. He changed balls and he really, day. really hooked this one. That's – well, he, he went to, the, what's that, Eternity Pie? Pie, yeah. That's that brand-new ball, which is way more surface, and he's really going around it now. Yeah. 250 max score, Parker Bowen up third. 244 max score for John Janowitz. Well, I think on the good side, Parker's only got one more shot on that left lane. Mm-hmm. Hold. Yep. That was that was pure. That was yeah, that, that was pure Parker was, right there. That was money right there. Yeah, <laughs> that was a great shot. Well, if he strikes here, he cannot be shut out um, by Janowitz here in the ninth and tenth frame. So 
If he strikes, he's going to have a chance to win the match, regardless of what J.J. does. Mm -hmm. Johnny, we talked a lot this weekend, too, uh, uh, the bowling ball we talked about there. There's a look at part of the trophy. That, and if our viewers want to buy one of those BVL balls, right, BVL.org. Yep. And uh, check it out. 90 bucks gets you. It's like it's a version of a Melee, correct? It's a Melee uh, core with an HK-22 uh, 22. cover, so it's a really oh. good ball. Oh, my God, yeah. yeah. And for the price, it's ridiculous. <laughs> Tom, you want that link again? BVL.org. Yeah. Online. Yep. Oh, that was online. More, more speed, you know, <laughs> yeah. lock and load right there. Yeah. He did split the arrow yeah. down there on 10. Yeah. Wow. Well, he played four different lines in the left lane, but the one he used the last two yeah. frames was the, was the correct one. That looks more like Parker where he just went back to his – yeah. Is 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 a game where he's just firm and through it all the firm time. Firm and through it, yeah. So Janowitz is sticking with the, the Crux other. Prime on the right lane. Well, I guess it's that, working. <laughs> yes, that was a good decision. Huh? Yeah. You know that we have another player out here. It tends to use two balls almost every tournament on a pair of lanes. Ryan Schaefer. Ryan Schaefer. Does he? Yeah. yeah. It. it Inevitably, he normally uses two different balls just because of his unique role. Uh, he just sees the lanes that way, and it works. Well, we have a 10th frame finish, just like the first game. That's it. About 21 is the arrows. Ooh, I didn't think that ball was going to wow. make the turn. That looked like it, it yep. just lost it before it got there. John's going to make Parker show up. He absolutely yeah, he is. He already has, yeah. At 244 still possible for J.J. here. Next shot gets him in the 240s. Parker's max is 250. So if John strikes here, Parker's got a double. Yeah, right now he needs the first one, no matter what Janowitz does. Right. But that's the ultimate goal is to make your partner and your, your opponent have to double. <laughs> Great shot there. Yep. That, he gave that ball more shape. So I, John looks like he's uh, definitely locked in on the left lane. He's mm -hmm. letting that ball turn the corner on the back end where that other ball just kind of like labored, just didn't want to do it. Yeah. Well, Parker found his line with some changes in his approach and, and lane play. J.J. found it with a, just, a, just a ball change um, right in the back half of this match, and they're both mm -hmm. successful. Well, see, and now you're talking about a new ball with new surface with different dynamics, and, and that's J.J. all in one there. He is so much into the numbers and the shells and the cores. It's just that's what he does. He's a scientist. Yeah. Great finish. Well, Parker needs two. I think he'll put it there. It's a matter of carry. Well, Parker's been in this position a million times. Mm -hmm. It's just, I don't think, I don't think it's pressure to Parker. It's just a job. Yeah, yeah, it is. He enjoys the pressure. I always do. Did you enjoy the pressure? I love it. That's the best part of it. <laughs> yeah, just. There's one. There's one. New stroke. He, he knew that one. Yep. And this is a, a rare event yeah. for Parker. He has a family here as well today. My martial arts instructor said to me, think of all of the things when your palms are sweaty and you're a little bit nervous and so forth. Think of all the bad things you're thinking about in bowling. He says, when you start to feel like that, if I strike, they give me this much. If they don't strike, they give me this much. Does it get any better than that? <laughs> <laughs> How nervous were you on that hundred thousand dollars? That's different. <laughs> <laughs> that was, Parker needs this one for the win. Carry. He's walking it out. No, oh no. Too quick. Oh damn. Well, John Janowitz, Chris Barnes in their semifinal yeah, match here. Semifinals. 
2023 wow. Johnny Petragli the DVL yeah. Tournament Champion. Now Craig Elliott with Tom yeah. Cutter and the Hall of Famer himself, Johnny yeah. Petragli Jr. Yeah. Wow. Parker just yeah. amped that one just a hair. I'll be getting up now and uh, leaving you, but just leave you on this thought when you brought up the 300. Yeah. What happens differently in the 300 is if I strike, you get $100,000, and if you don't, they go, nice try. <laughs> There's a lot of big difference there. <laughs> Another one. Johnny, right. real quick, though, thank you for your 50-plus years to BVL and all you've done for the sport of bowling uh, through your career. We appreciate every bit of it. And it's an honor to be here with you in your event here, the BVL Tournament Champions. So thank you, sir. Well, thank you so much, and thanks for everything you do for the veterans. They keep yeah. us alive every day. We've got to do the same for them. Yep. Right. Thank you, Johnny. Doesn't get much better than that, does it? Oh. I mean. Tom Adcock, who is our tournament leader, he'll get a couple of shots here as well, and then Chris Barnes will come on for his. I think Chris gets, what, eight shots? Yeah, and I think uh, Tom gets four maybe here. Four, I think Chris gets eight, and Tom comes back and gets ten. There's some yeah, goofy number. Whole, give him a whole game. Yeah. yeah give him a whole game. Well, you think but, about that, they go, well, there's only a couple games on TV. No, there isn't. There's more than that when you start adding up all the uh, practice shots. And, and remember what we learned, remember earlier this year? Or was it, maybe it was late last year, right? Uh, Mike Haggett. When he bowled for one of the titles, I don't remember where we were at, but he said, oh, I don't need practice, I'm good. Oh, yeah, he didn't throw any shots. You know what, after that, uh, he, he takes pra practice shots. Now. Yeah. yeah, he goes, I don't want to change the lanes. Well, they changed anyway. Yeah. Yeah, I think he learned the hard way, unfortunately. Barnes got his Wichita colors on, black and Oh, yeah, always. Are they his colors now or are they Ryan's colors now? I don't know. There's somebody's colors. And Tommy's got that jersey. He's got a whole bunch of faces on it. I don't know who those faces are. Uh, just Illinois football fans. So take a look at that poster there, Tom. That's what we're talking about. Was it 1942, 1943? So those war bonds. That is the 1943. first, first December BBL poster ever. Wow. December 28, 1942 through January 3, 1943. Yeah, Bowler's Victory Legion is what BVL used to be called. It still is BVL, which is now it's Bowler's Veterans Link. No. Did I get that right? BVL. Bowling Bowling to Veterans Link. Yeah. There's just no two to it. Bowling to Veterans Link. That's what it is. So BVL.org, check out all the great stuff. they've uh, This this fiscal year, uh, they hit their highest ever, $1.4 million in donations through events all over the country. And you can get involved as well. Uh, buy that uh, that bowling ball. Ninety bucks is all it is for the ball. Yep. And if it's got the HK22 on it, I, I don't know if you're folks out there. If you haven't tried a, a Brunswick ball with HK22 on it, uh, that cover stock is pretty impressive. And it's got the melee core, which is really long and flippy on the back end. So if you like a ball to go long and be snappy on the back end, for ninety bucks. I, that, I told John Lespini when he was in there, that's too cheap. <clears throat> That's I mean, a, you can't buy any bowling ball for 90 bucks, let alone one with Johnny's signature. You can't, you can't get a plastic ball it. for 90 bucks. No, and this one's got Johnny's signature, too. So, I mean, that's, that's pretty solid. That's a good looking ball. So, let's keep an eye on what the players are doing here. You got, you got Adcock in with a gem. It looks like it's been sandblasted. And you got to know that Janowitz already took a ball that's already been dull and moved farther left. He's down on the warm-up pair, just kind of staying loose. But he's he's got a he's throwing his exotic down there. I bet you he's doing some testing. Yes, it's a different pattern. I mean, it's the same pattern, hasn't been broken down the same down there. But he's looking at some different motions, and we might see him make another ball change at some point here in this match. Let's get out to uh, to Chase Kaufman here with Parker Bone the third. All right, Chase Kaufman, you're back with Parker Bowen the third. Parker, obviously that left lane kind of gave you a little bit of trouble. Tell me what you were kind of going through on that left lane as compared to the right lane. Well, the left lane, I really wanted to make sure I kept it on line. If I kept it on line, the lane would stay there or the ball would stay there. It was just a matter of how much or how good it was going to go through the pins. You know, I splashed them around in one shot, threw it really good there in the ninth frame and split the 8-9. And then, uh, well, it was up to me in the 10th, and unfortunately I only was good enough for one, not two. You had a heck of a season. I mean, you finished in the top 10 in points, only bowling just a little bit over half the events. How do you feel about your performance this season? Well, overall as a season, I'm not going to complain, you know, outside of the fact of not standing in the winner's circle. But uh, knowing I've always said from the first day 
that junior gold for kids is the most important thing. And, and our three children, you know, Leslie and myself, we stand behind our kids through thick and thin. And, and I have zero problem bowing down at that point. I congratulated all the guys that won. They went out there and, and kicked everybody else's tail. But uh, I'm hungry enough that I wanted to come back out and still be part of it. And, well, I'm just going to take what I got and we're going to sail into the sunset. And speaking of the kids, are we going to expect to see on the kids tour out again this season? <laughs> I might show up for a couple of them. I don't think I'm going to ch go chase them all. But, uh, you know, there's some new big rules and big changes that are coming on for the kids' tour. So, uh, who knows? I'll, I'll go out and bowl one or two, and, well, we'll just uh, see if one or two doesn't turn into a couple more from there. All right, Parker, about the third year, fourth place finish at the Johnny Petragla BVL Tournament of Champions. Thank you, Parker. Thank you very much. A hungry Parker Bone. That's not uh, what these players want to see next year because he didn't. No, he won four times last year. He yeah. got skunked this year. I mean, <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard to say skunked. Um, he's you know he's bowled a couple of events and he's 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 been in two shows in the last couple of weeks. So. Yeah, I don't think you're ever going to shut out Parker Bone because his ability and his knowledge of the game is unbelievable. The way he reads the lane, the way he sees ball motion, and as long as he is healthy and he's got that classic style. He's he's going to be in the finals. A couple more practice shots here for Chris Barnes. I know you can't see it at home, but the first thing that Parker did after the interview is walks over to John Laspina and Johnny Petraglia and shakes her hand and thanks him, thanking them both for what they do. That's that's just a class act right there. I mean, it's, he, he just lost, right? I mean, he took time to talk to us, and then he goes over and, and talks to our, our hosts and sponsors. So it's, uh, That's why he's a unbelievable ambassador of the sport, but... You take a look at Johnny Petraglia. I mean, I think he's kind of followed in Johnny's footsteps a little oh, bit. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Can have a better role <clears throat> model. Actually, Parker is shaking everybody's hand. It's over there. <laughs> well, I didn't shake our hand. We're going to come into our third game here. John Janowitz, Chris Barnes. This one has, to me, uh, like a 226-229 type game. That's it? Yeah, I don't think I don't think it's going to be. We're going to see guys moving around, ball change or two. Well, the, the biggest thing I see that it could be a problem because Chris has the ability, and his A game is to throw it pretty firm is to throw it through the spot in 2810, you know, especially on the left lane. I'm getting this look from Parker. He just, he, you never know. <laughs> well, he did come and shake our hand. <laughs> I told you he went around and shook everybody's hand. He even included us. How about that? Yeah, well, it's a good thing because I'd, I'd have hunted him down. <laughs> Janowitz, first shot. He stays with that eternity. Oh, that was slow. That was slow, and that's a bit. That's a good break right there. Well, <clears throat> he got a piece of the pie there. <laughs> <laughs> Not the piece he was looking for. No trouble on the spare. Uh-oh. Technical difficulties. Whoa, that ball just about didn't even make the turn. It was down to the break point, and it looked like it labored that last 15 feet to even get to the head pin. Craig Elliott out making sure that our camera doesn't fluctuate anymore. We don't want you to lose any of the action.
and I believe Chris Barnes is throwing two different balls also on this pair. I just got to get a look at what he's throwing on the left lane. But whatever he's throwing is way more responsive on the back end. Simple spare for Chris. John Janowitz staying with that Crux Prime on the right lane, and that didn't fare well. 4-9. So they've actually, with all the practice shots, have burned up that mid lane a little bit. That ball's wanting to read a little bit soon. So now we get a, into a speed issue. Too much speed, the ball doesn't want to read the back end. Too little speed, it reads the mid lane too much, and it hooks too much. So, uh, Greg Elliott, you might be right. 225 could be the game. 4-9, John Janowitz picks it up. He made that look simple. John staying with that eternity pie on the left lane. If I can get Kelly Kulik over here, I'll ask her what Barnes is throwing on each lane so that we kind of got an idea of what's going on. J.J. in around 23. Down to 10 at the break point, just slow hooking it. I believe Chris was throwing a reality right around 21, 22, 12 down lane, and that's the same shot that he had that did carry the previous shot. Just doesn't look like it wants to make the turn, or he's got to get it farther to the right, the break point, and give it just a little less speed, let it shape up a little bit. Jenny was staying clean off that split conversion. Simple spare for Chris Barnes, 10 pin. So that is two totally different balls. Chris is throwing a Zen Gold on the left lane. Oh, the gold label? Yeah, the gold label. A lot of that ball this year. And a reality on the right lane. So, I mean, that's about as different as you can get, I yeah, think. Yeah, a big ASIM to, a, to a, a symmetric, you know. He's a numbers guy, too, and he's those, yeah, those are those are big time different. And we got JJ throwing two ASIMs, just different covers. Unless he switched on the right lane. And he did. He went to the oh, eternity. Still, no, that's the eternity he just threw on the right lane. He the shot before he threw uh, the Crux Prime. And these guys out here, folks, I and mean, they don't think about changing balls. You know, I mean, the uh, us mere mortals, we wait till the tenth frame and go, well, maybe you ought to change, and you do, and you go, oh, God, I wish I'd have done that sooner. These guys don't even hesitate. Well, that's what, that's what I tell people at home too. I said, when you're thinking about changing balls, it's already too late. Right. Yeah, well, if you're these, th these guys don't think about it, they just do it. 
because most of us double guess ourselves. They go, oh, I don't know. I, I, I need to throw a little better. I need to do this. I need. By the time all that happens, you're in the 10th frame or that game's over. Well, I think, and, and you see a lot there down ball ripping, right? You'll hear the, the guy say, oh, it's not the ball, it's me. Well, you just flat 10 four times in a row. Yeah. It's not you. It's not you. <laughs> it's the ball. Okay. There's technology out there that's going to get the ball through the pins. I mean, this really has turned into a technology sport. And if you don't understand the numbers or you don't understand the shapes or the surface or the oil uh, or the volumes you're playing on, then you're just kind of throwing a bowling ball. The game has gotten extremely way more technical than it used to be. Well, it's like a golfer, right? They have 14 clubs in the bag and uh, in bowling. That'd be too heavy a bowling bag to carry with 14 bowling <laughs> balls. <laughs> but you get the idea. Um, they're the tools, right? The tools you need to uh, to be successful, and there's a lot of different tools um, to make that happen. Well, you still get people out there, and it's always fun to get them in the pro shop. They're like, I don't understand why somebody needs so many balls. Why can't they just, you know, change what they're doing with the ball they're using? Well, that was, unfortunately, that's evolution. That used to work, and technology has hit bowling, and now it's it's about surface, 70% of ball reaction, ball surface to lane surface. And you you start matching those things up the right way, and the ball starts reading the right part of the lane at the right time, you strike. It reads the wrong part of the lane. You just hit the pocket. In Tuesday League, you can do that, right? Just just change what you do a little bit. But out here on these demanding conditions, there's way more to it. Oh! oh. <laughs> now, that is what you call a slow-motion four-pin. He, he, oh. I think he was, he was thinking he was going to go look at this in slow-mo. But this, this is going to take a day and a half in slow-mo here to fall over. Yeah, he crossed like 23 at the arrows, he got it to like nine down lane, and it still turned the corner too hard. Being a strong symmetrical, it turns the corner, gets high, but he gets a love tap to get that four pin out. He was begging for that one off his hand, too. He went down to a knee immediately. Janowitz up by nine. John Janowitz, I, I guess if it, a bowler can be an anomaly. This guy is it. He just he's just amazing to watch. It is really amazing, I guess, as a ball rep and just as being the commentator on the show sitting back here watching how you have one guy that sees the lane with a big ASIM, started with a big ASIM, then switched to another big ASIM, but he sees it the same on both sides. And the other guy with a big ASIM and then goes to a symmetrical. I mean, you kind of like to just get them in a conversation. Like, what did you see? Symmetrical works for you, and it, why didn't you go to the ASIM over there? Right. Yeah, these uh, these guys are they're thinkers. Starts to see oh, now that bringing that uh, bringing that scoring pace up just a little bit here in this uh, semifinal match. Don't forget about Tom Adcock waiting for the winner. This one to bowl for this title. He, yeah, he didn't leave anything out there this week either. Holy cow. He knocked down a boatload of pins. So here's the guy that, in his interview, which was kind of unique, said, I feel like I've been knocking on the door and I've never got a chance to walk through or I never walked through it. And when he won, he goes, I finally walked through the door. I think he's blown the door right off the hinges. He, I don't think there is a door anymore. Yeah, the door hasn't shut since he got to Florida. That was a, I was just right behind him there, and that was like 25 to 11, and that was just dead flush. It is amazing the way these guys see the lane. So it's something else to think about and keep in mind here. 
Uh, not just his title, a major up for grabs. But Tom Madcock has a chance to, if he wins this event, he takes uh, PBA 60 player of the year yeah. honors. Pete Weber is a leader right now at 19,045 points. There's 7,500 points available. So Adcock, well, that would be enough for him to get that. Wow. J.J. just with a weak, look like weak 10-pin. So Adcock, so that could change the whole thing. It looked like Pete was going to take that fairly easily. Adcock got a chance to win. You know, and I, if you've never seen Tom Adcock before, folks, and he stands out here in front of this camera, you're not going to believe that he is a super senior to, get to win <laughs> super senior player yeah. of the year. Yeah. I don't think we're allowed to check ID of these players, but I think a few guys have questioned uh, Tom Adcock being over 60. With the power he has. I don't know there's nobody stronger. It out looks here. like he's 35 for crying out loud. And he throws it that way, too. So 257, the max score for John Janowitz. 269, Chris Barnes. Well, this foundation strike is obviously huge. Oh, another trip four. Almost a four nine, but he, Barnes got a trip four. JJ goes, I got that. Want to see it happen? Another look at that shot. There it is. And the nine went with a kind of collapsed bin together. Now here's the scene. Here goes our lean man with a Swiffer. Now we know how the oil went on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Old school. We do want to thank John Lespina and the staff here at Orange Bowl Lanes for their hospitality this week. First time the tour's been here, and they're, they're wrapping up some pretty impressive remodels here. Oh, my. They're putting a ton of money into this place. Got to go over to John Lespina's house last night. Uh, they had, make, uh, had a nice Italian dinner, and he handmade all of the meatballs. It was a fabulous dinner. I, he goes, I love to cook. I didn't know he was such a great cook, but food was awesome. Yeah, we, we, we had McDonald's, so thanks for the invite. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll take pictures next time. Please don't. <laughs> I'm sure it was fantastic. The wine was good, too. <laughs> Barnes after the re-rack <laughs> here. And... Oh, that was almost a 7-10. I'm surprised he stayed with that ball because it's just been so kind of lazy on the back end. I mean, he barely got to the pocket the first time he used it and it struck. Then he went high and struck. I just, I'm surprised he hasn't switched with that. But he's throwing it. We're back here watching. Two forty-eight. Now max score for Chris Barnes. Max score for John Janowitz. Two fifty-seven. Just seems like our whole season went by so quick. Ten weeks, twelve weeks, kind of jammed up here, and this is our last stop already. Everybody be back home, getting ready for league. I mean, that's where I'll be headed, back to Wayne Wade's Columbus Bowl in the pro shop. Oh, that is two shots in a row. He gets a four pin with a love tap. He gets a light smack on the 10 pin. From the six, look at it, comes out of the gutter, just taps it, and it falls over. First strike for Chris Barnes, strikes out for 248. 
needs the next two. We also have another celeb here in the house, Bill Moore, the host of the Bud Moore Classic. He came all the way out here just to watch Johnny Bull. Yeah, to here to support his good friend. That was a way better shot. So Chris is going to end up with 240-something. Yeah, 248 says max 257 John Janowitz. So, again, J.J. is going to have to double. J.J. must be getting used to this. I just got to throw a double and a tenth. So you headed home after this? Yes. Yes. <laughs> we'll get a little chance, a, a little... Uh, a little break. A little short siesta, and then we'll be back live on Bowl TV with uh, some regional action, uh, PBA League up in Portland, Maine. Uh, you know, the RPI qualifiers that are coming up throughout the season. Some college college kicks off here, college bowling, so we'll have that here on Bowl TV. Texas High School State Championships. The Texas High School Championships we'll have down in San Antonio in December. So, yeah, there's you got a, a full schedule. A little, yeah, I'll get a little rest, though. I'll sleep on Friday for a little bit. Wow. They're keeping you traveling. Yeah, how about that late 10 pin? So 240. 247. Chris Barnes, possible 257. Oh, it should be 248. That did fall. Needs the first one. Oh. He sent a helicopter after that 47. John Janowitz is the epitome of no motion, folks. He walks back like nothing has happened. That is keeping your emotions under control. Uh, he's been in this situation multiple times in, in his career. Well, a 10-time member of Team USA, I think, something like that. He, Some he earned his spot this year as a 50-year-old. <laughs> that's, that's, that's not bad. That doesn't happen. This shot for the win of this match to take on Tom Adcock for the title. Ball in hand to eight. Flush. Oh, and wow. just butt kicks out the 10 pin. Let's see that one again. That 10 pin was going either way, either by the six or it looked like the nine pin taking it out. 250s. So like I said, be 220s to 220s, right? You, you were close. <laughs> yeah. You were close. That was, that was a heck of a match there. Over under on that was 500. <laughs> yeah. Well, this next match is going to be quite the thing to watch. Tommy Adcock coming in getting 10 shots, I believe, on a pair of lanes that is obviously changing drastically. Guys are changing equipment about as fast as we can change our socks here. It's just. Unbelievable. Is Tom going to throw big stuff? Is he going to throw symmetrical stuff? Kelly Kulik out there. Going to give him a little guidance. Yeah, I'm feeling Jim Callahan's he's out got, there. He's got the gem and the pie. Well, that's the two balls he's been using all week. I, didn't, I never seen him throw a gold label. That doesn't mean he doesn't have one. But, you know, Janowitz, he's got the pie. And whatever else he's got in his van. Tom will get all his practice shots here, and uh, we're going to get things set for this championship match. Look at the trophy there. And that deck of cards was something that uh, was given away to a bunch of soldiers back in the uh, the 40s, part of one of the first BVL uh, uh, gifts that they did. So that's still one of the original decks. That's pretty cool. And there's Johnny Petraglia's bowling pin. That was one of the pins that was in his legendary 300 game on TV, one of $100,000. That one he gave to his good friend John Laspina. And, of course, autographed it for him. OK. 
Okay, this is uh, just practice shots here for Tom Atcock, but he's not liking the way that ball went through the pins. That ball deflected. And it's kind of a smash 7-10 there. Barnes has made a bunch of shows, a bunch of step letters come up a little short here today. And I think uh, we're going to have a little chat here with Chris and Chase as Tom takes his final practice shots. Let's go to the guys right now. All right, Chase Kaufman here with Chris Barnes. Chris, a third place finish here at the Johnny Petraglia BVL TOC. As soon as we got onto this warm up here, the number one thing that you and I both saw out there was the 10 pins you left in. Uh, practice and then still happened. How did you feel you combated those 10 pins out there? Obviously, you left a few, but how do you feel about your game? Well, I mean, I'm, I probably maximized my score in the big scheme of things. Uh, I left left the one. Uh, I actually had a four pin on the left lane, which surprised me, but the right lane was a big problem for me, and I spent six out of my eight practice shots in that lane and ended up going with reality to try and get it there a little differently, and it worked mostly. <laughs> uh, you know, I got some good breaks. Uh, you know, I felt like somebody was helping me out there with the four pin and then the, the ten pin and got them both over. And just the one in the ninth, I liked better than all of them because I felt like I needed to get it to the right to get it to turn the corner. That you know, I kept getting it in a little bit and it just kept getting long. I thought I caught all of that and got it to the right, and then it still wobbled. So it was the same for me all week on that lane. I, that was my highest game on that pair the whole week. And uh, you know, shout out to my friends and family out in Oregon. Uh, Thank you much, guys. So. Well, it was one heck of a week here, Chris. We congratulate you on not only a great week here this week, but a congrats on a great season so far, and we'll definitely see you out here next year. Thank you. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, guys. And a little shout-out to uh, a lot of our bowling family's friends out there. He's talking about his good buddy Mark Anderson back in Oregon who's got uh, some, some serious health issues right now. So we're all thinking about you, Mark, and you can tell Chris is as well. And uh, Craig Elliott, Tom Carter back here. A few more practice shots for Mr. Adcock. And, Tom, we need to take a minute, too, as this is our last event on the 52 of the year. we got some people to thank. I'm sure, I'm sure you do as well. But, of course, I want to thank you, all our Bowl TV crew we've had all summer long. You know, we, we've, we've had Chuck Ritchie out here. We've had Chase Coffin. We've had Mike Flanagan, you know, Brian Kane, uh, Tom Hess. And, you know, you've been a part of our team for quite a few years now. Uh, uh, almost uh, shows. ten, I think something yeah, like it's, that. It's, it's been it's been a minute or two. Yeah, it's you, been you a didn't bit. have as much gray hair when we started, and I didn't have any gray hair when we started. Yeah, so thanks well, for that. And I'm losing <laughs> it too. I mean, it's turning beige here in the back. <laughs> but I know, time you got some people to thank too. At the end of a long season, right? You know, oh. so go ahead and take take a few minutes. Well, to you guys and for the opportunity, and, and uh, Jason Thomas for uh, letting me be a part of Bull TV. And work with you guys has been an absolute joy. Every year I get to do it. Uh, to John Weber, uh, you know, for doing all the work that he does. <clears throat> and to my wife. I don't know who is the toughest one to put up with, John <laughs> or my wife. Um, I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> no. But uh, I, for those people and, you know, uh, Tom Clark uh, and the whole PBA crew, the, the PBA 50 whole family because this is really it is it's a big traveling senior family and we go from tournament to tournament uh, we all want to win we all want to bowl good but at the end of the day we all go out to dinner and have something to eat and relax and laugh uh, I honestly wouldn't know what I'd be doing if it wasn't for this uh, it I spent eight months in my pro shop back in Columbus uh, to look forward for the four months that we get to uh, do this out here every year. So everybody involved, uh, the USBC, uh, the PBA, all of you guys, all the fans, everybody at Bull TV, uh, Mike Flanagan, who originally uh, got a hold of me and said, you still want to do this? And I go, I'd love to do it if you want me. And we said, are you sure? <laughs> and I, and uh, so, again, thanks, everybody. Thanks for listening. And as everybody knows, you know, Bull TV, bowling lives here, and if you're going to watch bowling, please tune in. Tell your friends about it. Uh, the more people we we get to watch, uh, the more venues we get to go to, and it, it, it's the best thing that you can have. And if you're a bowling fan, you can't live without it.
Yeah, just because the regular tours are over now, there's uh, still plenty of Bull TV action coming up over the next several months, probably 20-plus events, and who knows, there might even be a few more snuck in here and there. Uh, but the next one up, uh, one of the next ones will be the, the, the uh, Portland, Maine. Uh, the PBA League will have league qualifying in, the, in a couple of weeks. Uh, from, have you ever been to Portland? To that, that I have thing? not. That's, uh, that's quite you, the place. You guys get to do those. I don't get to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll send you pictures. Okay. See? See, see, how that, see how that works? <laughs> Send me pictures. Yeah. Bring me back a cocktail. All right. Tom with a couple more shots. He's kind of, we heard, we heard Chris in his little uh, chat with Chase there saying he took most of his practice shots on the right lane. He identified it as a tough one, and ultimately that's one that kind of cost him a little bit there. So I wonder if, you know, we saw Tom talking to Kelly Kulik. She understands that as well. So, And that's the lane he's 7-10 down in one of his practice shots, and there's a 10-pin. So it looks like that right lane, lane 12, is a little tricky. Well, it looks like the right lane to me when Chris is bowling on it and he's throwing that eternity that the the ball just wanted to labor on the backside. I think if you get too big a ball, maybe, you know, uh, that gold label might be, you know, something to go to. Sa store a little more energy going down lane. Yeah, you never know. Um, we didn't see him take one. He's got a spare ball out there, and those two other balls that we saw him take out his bag initially, and he's talking to Jimmy Callahan here as well. And, like, okay, what do you really think I should do? And I don't know if he's decided yet, honestly. You do know if I'm not busy, I'm having a shoulder replacement. If you need me, you can call me. <laughs> yeah. And, and then what's after the shoulder? Then the knee and then the hip? And no, then I've already done the knees, okay. I, just the shoulder. You know, I texted Timmy Mack the other day, and he, uh, he told me he had both his shoulders done, uh, which is totally amazing. Uh, I'm just looking to get one done. Well, good luck with that, and, and no luck needed for either of these two players. John Janowitz is going to start things off here. Both players looking for the second one of the year. This will be bookend majors, the one to start the season, the one to finish the season for John Janowitz. Well, this could be the what second, an incredible season could be that the would second be. second title here in Florida in, 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 what, two weeks for Tom Adcock. Now that is a total. You know what that ball is? What? Come on, come on, come on. Trend two. Uh, you got me on that one. I, 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 is it really? It is. How does he come up with this stuff? <laughs> it is. So we didn't see this ball in the previous matches at all. And all, all week. <laughs> and all of a sudden. I'm not sure we'll see it again there with that racks. And that ball just took off. He's staring at the ball like he's putting it in a timeout. He gave it that look. Like, well, he went, to, he went to a symmetrical ball. Obviously, it changed directions way harder. <laughs> Tommy throwing a symmetrical ball, a summit. That's what I thought he picked up. I couldn't quite see it from uh, from back here. I didn't see him throw that ball that much this week at all. That 10-pin. That lane, I think the right lane is, you know, they're talking about the left lane being tough. I think the right lane right now yeah. is going to be the tougher, because it looks to me right where that first range finder is, the friction has gotten so heavy right there that it just sucks all the power right out of the ball. Well, i got to think that maybe that's why uh, Tom let J.J. start, because J.J.'s got to finish on that oh right lane. Oh, my. And then just yeah. the ultimate mistake there. Un. Believable. Well, if you're going to open, first frame is the best frame, right? I mean, right. He can still shoots 279. Right. Look at the positive side of things. He's going with a summit on the left lane also. I think that's probably a good choice on the left lane. Alrighty then. Is it my imagination, or does it look like in his follow-through, he's being a little softer than he was? Maybe a touch. You know, he's usually pretty aggressive. Comes through it pretty, pretty far, and that was this last eight-game block. It just looked like he's just kind of floating it down the lane. That's my perception, anyway. That was kind of an unfortunate break. It wasn't a bad shot, just a, the old fast eight. And Tommy's definitely slowed his speed down to get the ball to shape. I 
That's the eternity. It could be anything. <laughs> it could be an LT48. That's what I want to yeah. see. Whoever gets the final shot after the match is won, just throw an LT48 down the lane for Johnny one time. There you go. That would be awesome. The old, the original black one. Jan was throwing a purple hammer for his spare ball. I'm surprised it didn't bounce out. This week I've seen so many pins come back up the gutter. I mean, we reset so many times this week. I think Chris Barnes threw one halfway up the lane on the lane. Yeah, we saw three or four get stuck on lane two. They'd spin around and just stuck right in the middle lane. Of course, the best one this week was when Troy Litt missed his deadwood. I didn't see that. He missed the deadwood. It bounced out of the gutter. He dumped in the left gutter, and the ball bounced out and went across the lane in the right gutter. <laughs> All right, looking for our first strike of the championship match, John Janowitz, frame three. Sticking with the Eternity Pie, well, that's the, inside. Look the, yeah, look at the move he made, though. He, oh. he, he made a big jump left on that one. Yeah, and he only took it to, like, 12 down lane. He didn't get it past the rangefinder. Well, he saw something from that. Yeah, the trend fifth arrow and said, I'm to, like, 12-13. Yeah. And John Janowitz, if you got to watch the show in Hammond, Indiana, and watch John Janowitz uh, in qualifying and through the tournament uh, on Bowl TV, you've seen him play in seventh arrow, and he can play deep better than anybody on the senior tour, I think. No question. That looked like a good shot, but the ball yeah. is obviously not going through the pins the right way, not reading something the right way. Well, Tom's hit the pocket all three times. Ten pin, fast eight, ten pin. So, and this is where we we, we talk about Parker. You know, he sees that. It's going to be a ball change. I mean, three times is enough. That, there it is. <laughs> Tom Adcock, Adcock looking like. Superman. Clark L Kent. Literally, yeah. Yeah, he does. I keep saying he's got to get a jersey. He's got like a cape on it. Or get a jersey that's designed like a phone booth. <laughs> he doesn't fit in a phone booth. No, he wouldn't. That was right, a great there shot there. Go. It's going to come down to that right lane, though. Who, who can, who can, uh, you know, who can strike? It might be JJ in the tenth frame in that right lane with a chance to win. That's what it's going to come down to. Yeah, in the beginning of the step ladder finals, it was who could master the left lane. Now things have flip flopped, and who can master the right lane? But Tom Adcock, who has won the Peterson Classic, which is probably the hardest tournament known to man, if he can win that, he can figure this out. JJ got the first strike of this match. Now looking for the first double of this championship match. JJ really circled that one. You, you see, that ball got down there, but he's got it farther right. He took it to eight past the rangefinders yeah, down he, there. He liked that shot a lot. He's way farther left on the left lane. So something's telling him something on that right lane. All right, take care of the spare. You know, we already talked about John Lespina and what the staff's done here at the Orange Bowl lanes, but how about the crowd tonight? I think we were concerned. I mean, you know, with the, with the weather, it's like, you know what, there's going to be nobody here to watch this show and this yeah, well, place. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of people here. Yeah, that didn't happen. Swing that camera over there and look at the one, two, three, four, five, six rows of people. That's been one of the great things the last couple of years on this PB52 where we have great fan support. And thanks to each and every one of you watching at home or in person when you get a chance to come on out. Well, if you're a bowling fan and you're even into the the history of bowling, you have the greatest bowlers that have probably ever played the game for the most part on the PBA 50 Tour right now. It's all the guys you've ever watched on Wide World of Sports, ESPN, Fox, and uh, when you got 
Amaletto and Parker and Walter and Bob Learn, uh, Chris Barnes. We got Tom Hess. We got everybody right now. It's anybody out here, and it's just. It's not easy. It's well, tough. Three Hall of Famers on this step ladder alone. It's tough. Brian Goble, Jack Jurek, Ryan Schaefer. And then the new guys that come out here, Troy Lintz. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, Michael Haggett, uh, John Rakowski, hey, Dan Knowlton. Hey, all these guys are they're good. They're really good. Tom tried to make a little change there to get off the ten pin, and uh, that's that's what we saw. Though, right? You make a little move, and now you lose the pocket. So I, I just think he's got the wrong ball. Yeah, no, that's that's kind of what I'm thinking too. After you know, after seeing that, and, and back yeah. to the it's not it's not it's, right. It's he's thinking, oh, it's me. I, I didn't throw good enough. No. Yeah, I, you, you got to quit thinking that way. Right. And I, I know he's come back and talked to Callahan and and Kelly, but you know, at some point in time, you got you got to know that you can't make a shape and. He's already in the fifth frame. He's got two more shots on that lane, and they better be good. And that's the first time he's missed a pocket in this match. Uh, but unfortunately, he's he's down early here in frame five, and I think it was just product of, let, let me try something a little bit different and see what I got, and, and there was nothing there. Well, see, sometimes I guess you can get scared both ways. You, 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 if you're going to try something different, you really got to commit to it. But if you're going to change balls, you really got to commit to that too because, you know, you, you can't throw it halfway and then expect it to work. Quality shot right there. Well, on the good side for Tommy, he's ending on the left lane, which he obviously likes that ball motion better because the ball is going through the pins. It's almost splitting the 8-9. The problem is, how do you strike on the right lane? Well, the four pin wasn't in uh, something that we were we were looking to see. No, here. I mean, it's been the ten. That, I, that the actually four. could have been a break too, because that was really high. He already left a four nine on that lane once. Well, that's a pick him at this yep. point here. Uh, between these two players in this final match. John walks back. He's so methodical when he walks back. Just, I mean, it's like it's like a walking computer. You can see his mind just going through things. A lot of great TOC moments on the regular tour. Of course, we talked about Jason Couch three consecutive. We talked about Kelly Kulik. Oh, she defeated Chris Barnes, and they're here working together this week. That's kind of <laughs> cool to see that. Um, and here we are back after over 30 years of a hiatus of the TOC here on the PBA 50 Tour. And we're going to have a very deserving champion. One of these players will get their second title of their careers and of this season. Oh, he stepped to the right, and I didn't see that because you couldn't hardly see it, but that was way light. That, uh, that was definitely the old light mixer, and now he's – Really confused. Well, the big shot here is can Tommy figure out how to put something together because foundation frames, as we all know, are, are huge, and he's got to shoot the ninth on this lane that he absolutely hates right now. Did I say that he hated that lane? Well, you heard him yell carry. I mean, just, he kind of thought it wasn't a bad shot, and that ball. But off his like, hand. Like what J.J.'s did, it just it jumped, right? Well, off his hand, it looked like he hit up on that ball. If he's on the replay, it looked like the ball went up in the air off of his hand, which is going to kind of. Oh, then he just missed I that. I think he, he was talking to Kelly. He's giving. Uh oh. oh his thumb. thumb came out. About thumb. giving that uh, a little more loft. So I think that was intentional. His thumb just came out of. Spare ball. It broke the bottom. Right. See, 
That's how strong he is. He just he just broke the well, thumb. Well, when you have a lot of thumb torque, and thumb torque meaning that you're bending your thumb to hang on to a ball to throw it harder, and that ball's trying to come off your hand. You're trying to hang on to it. Something's going to give sooner or later. But he didn't need that open because now the best he can do is 202. Well, J.J.'s pace 199. We're not seeing any doubles yet, so this is far from over. Uh, but, yeah, Tom had a, a bit of a disadvantage now. Not going to have a spare ball to throw the rest of the match. He's going to have to throw one of the other balls. So, you know what? Just uh, throw strikes and not worry about it. Well, this could make him focus even harder, and that could be a good thing. Oh, that was way in, wasn't it? My oh, goodness. he didn't get the love tap that Chris Barnes got off of that <laughs> one. And it just doesn't look like the Tom Adcock of Qu in the last five, six games where it, it just looked like he couldn't miss. I, it could be that you know, he's wanting this so much he's just not relaxed enough to, to let it go. Uh, that's kind of kicking the armor right there because now we're looking at 192. So basically, JJ's just got a pace. Yeah, but remember he four pinned the last time, and he thought it was a good break as much as that ball was hooking. So he's you know he's going to make a move off that. And what we've seen a lot this week when the guys make a move, um, you know you, you missed a pocket right. Um, so let's see what he does. He's going to hit this one harder. Uh, solid shot yeah. there. That's a professional bowling shot right there, Tom. Well, yeah, he figured out the right lane, and he's got to end on that lane. And this was his last chance to figure something out before the 10th. That was a line change, a hand position it's change, a rotation it, change, it, yeah. <laughs> everything. <laughs> and it worked to perfection. The only thing it's still the same is the same tournament. <laughs> It's amazing to watch the greats, how they dissect the lane and the release and ball rotation. That's going to be flush. He does get the seven to fall. And unfortunately, this match is totally over. And John Janowitz, as you stated earlier, just bookend the PBA Senior Tour. Yeah. Start with a major, end he, with a major. He wins with a, a major, winning the Masters, which is no gimme there, and ends up winning the Tournament of Champions, and everybody in this field is a champion. So it, what an incredible season he just put on. This is something that goes down in history. That's a miss. Yeah, he, you know. Yeah, well, it, it doesn't yeah, make it doesn't, any difference matter, anyway. Yeah, yeah I mean, Max is going to be, what, 180, 190, and Janus is already there. So it's, uh, yeah, Max it's, is it's 170 tough, tough now. To finish for Tom, not something you want to do on TV in a championship match. Uh, just just could never. I mean, he was lined up He was lined up early. He just couldn't knock down all ten pins. Well. That was the unfortunate part. I think we both agreed that on that right lane, he needed to change balls. He needed a different motion. He needed something different, and he kept trying to make it work. And I just, I think that was the wrong call. I mean, we will never know what was going through his head. I mean, he's out there throwing it, but just from a perspective that we have, it just didn't look right. I think you know part of that too is watching him practice. He never, never. I don't know if he struck in practice on that lane. There, and, and again, not a lot of people have been striking on that lane today. Uh, JJ figured it out in a couple of crucial spots in all his matches, and uh, you know Janowitz runs the ladder here. And it's not like he, he, you know, he beat any any slouches. I mean, oh, Hall no. of Famer, Hall of Famer, Hall of Famer. Famer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my goodness. Now he beats just a Hall of Famer. Then he beats two USBC and PBA Hall of Famers. <laughs> Tom Adcock strikes out for 170. Unfortunately, a heartbreaking loss for him after bowling so incredibly well this whole week, and especially today, just kind of n annihilating pins then have to run into unfortunately uh, a questionable lane reaction yeah this pair this pair got tricky 
And uh, we know one of the, uh, the smartest guys in the game right there, John Janowitz. He's one to figure it out. Well, you watch John Janowitz and that release there. His hand is going around the base of that ball so fast, changing the axis rotation on that, that ball. He's getting the ball to skid a little bit farther by doing what he's doing, but he makes it read a little bit harder on the back end. And at this point, just pick the ball and throw it, right? It's over. Uh, that's, uh, that's the end of it. But he's going to go through the motions. Why don't you keep striking? Yeah. Oh, that was a little faster. He didn't hold it down as long. <laughs> ah, that's okay. Yeah, he's just kind of laughing about it. He's already thinking about what dessert he's going to get, I guarantee. <laughs> it'll, it'll be a good one, I'm sure. Um, Plenty of great spots here in town to get a nice, uh, a nice little meal, a nice little dessert. So John Janowitz, our champion here. Johnny Patrick, the BBL tournament champion. We're going to have Tom Clark, John Lespine out there. Then John and I will have a little chat here shortly, right here on Bowl TV. And to see uh, JJ join the PBA, win his first PBA 50 title, which was the first tournament of the year, the USBC Senior Masters and then win the PBA 50 Tournament of Champions to conclude the season. Incredible first year in the PBA. We always wanted you to join, and you did it in style, big time. So congratulations to JJ. And he ran through these Hall of Fame players, the tournament leader, Tom Adcock. Amazing bowling, thanks to the players here this week. Uh, before, we, before these guys give away the, the hardware, uh, this tournament is sponsored by BVL. We want to bring a lot of attention to bowling to veterans. The Bowlers to Veterans link does incredible things for veterans. This man right here, and both of these guys, Johnny Petraglia has been the ambassador for that program for 50 years. And, uh, but I'm really happy on behalf of the PBA to be able to donate $2,000 to the BVL. So thank you very much, John. We probably should give it to Mary. <laughs> you got it. But I hope that's going to go to a great cause. We know that. Uh, John, take the, take the honors. Thank you, Tom. Um, I travel around the country, and I do lots of speaking, and I always follow Tom Clark. And he raises the bar very high, and I try to reach it. But, you know, a pro is a pro, and the PBA is in great hands with Tom Clark as its commissioner. And earlier today, I forgot to mention the person who this tournament is named for, Johnny Petraglia. I gave him an award recently, the Helen Duval Award, and it was not about his bowling, it was about the quality of his character. And this is one tremendous human being, served his country, he's a great family man, I know him well. And he spent 50 years helping us raise money for many, many of his brothers and sisters who serve. So with that, I say thank you, Johnny P., for a lifetime of wonderful memories and all good things that happened in Brooklyn for the yeah, both of us. Yeah, Tom Adcock, come on up and claim some money. You bowled great this week. It was a joy watching you. And you convinced our bowlers that you could really knock the pins down here, and you certainly did. With our compliments, you could tell things are bad. We don't have a, an envelope. So. That's all good. Thank you very much. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. My pleasure. You strong enough? You good? Take it by the. <laughs> now the ball. Well, hopefully they're the having a little bit of trouble picking up the trophy. Just pick it up. <laughs> John Janowitz, you impressed all the amateurs, and my wife said to me, "I met this nice young man on the lanes. He really bowls well." And she was right. First place, Johnny Petraglia, BBL Open. <laughs> From Winter Haven, Florida. He doesn't have to travel too far. Thank you. We couldn't afford shipping, so that's great. <laughs> and with that, every dollar raised for BVL this year 
is in Johnny Petraglia's honor. Be generous, bvl.org. Let America's heroes know that bowling cares. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Now we're going to get Craig Elliott out there with a brief interview with John Janowitz. All right, now it's my turn to talk to John for a little bit here again. I think I think Tom covered most of what I was going to talk about earlier. Um, you know, bookend titles, majors, start the year, finish the year, um, rookie of the year campaign, pretty amazing year for you, John. But what I want to talk about is we watched you run the ladder against Hall of Famers. You went through a lot of ball changes, line changes, hand changes. What were you seeing on the lane, and how did you attack that and come out successful today? When I bowled match play, um, I hit this pair, and I remember the, the left lane got a little tight. Uh, at, in the first transition, and, and that's where it bit me. In the, I saw it again on the two, uh, for the two eight ten, and I was like, "Well, I got to do. I can't stay in that ball anymore." So I knew I had to switch balls to something, and uh, went to that eternity pie, and it was it was right. And then, uh, you know, we, it transitioned again. Uh, start in the match against Chris, right right toward the end. Fortunately, I you know, got a um, you know got a couple good breaks in near the end at. Uh, to, to win that match, but uh, I knew I needed to make uh, some uh, another ball change. I tried that trend too, and I after going Brooklyn, I like I knew that wasn't the right ball. So um, I'm like, well, I'm just going to stick with what I got, just gear down, and get even slower, and uh, just kind of hope for the best. I, I could see that the scores were going to probably get it a little bit lower as they were transitioning, but fortunately, it worked out. Well, let's not forget that this guy is a USBC Hall of Famer and very well deserved his second title on the year. Uh, quickly, uh, talk to uh, about some of your, your, your sponsors, your, your family, your friends, and talk about what a great year this has been for you. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been quite the year. I mean, you know, to be able to, to bookend majors is uh, very very special. And I, I there's a lot of people, there's so many people I want to thank. Lord and Savior Jesus Christ first. Um, I also want to thank. Um, um, <clears throat> I also want to thank uh, BVL for uh, for the sponsorship here and the Spina family for uh, you know everything that they've done for bowling uh, at the great the great facility they have here at Orange Bowl. I also want to thank Kegel for uh, and Chris Chartrand, Doug Dukes, Don Agent for uh, um, you know giving me the time off to be able to actually you know do be able to bowl this whole tour and uh, you know. Two other people I just want to thank. I'm not on actual ball staff, but I do want to thank uh, Jim Callahan and Kelly Kulik from uh, Storm Products. They've given me a lot of help over, over actually over the course of the tour. And I uh, also want to thank Fancy Williams and uh, Compass Sportswear for uh, giving me some nice jerseys and uh, finally getting me in the 21st century when it comes to uh, <laughs> af bowling athletic wear. <laughs> so, but thank you. Uh, congratulations, John, on a great season, two majors, and uh, we're looking forward to what we're going to see next year. John Janowitz, everybody.